Hi, welcome back to Fun with Robots. So, what have we done? So, we talked a lot about how we've built Tiffany and all the systems we're going to put in here in phase two. So, here we go then. Now, okay, so this is basically going to be very, very, very brief. Sort of, I'm going to rush through a few things, but in the next few weeks, I'm going to go into a lot more detail about how we did it, what hardware we used, what software we used, what coding we used, and all that kind of stuff, okay? So, basically, as I mentioned before, we've got cameras in Tiffany's head. Now, I say cameras, we've got two. We've got top camera here is actually a 5.8 gigahertz um, camera that's connected to a transmitter that transmits to 5.8 gigahertz receiver. The kind of thing you see on drones, you know, when you fly drones around. And it's a camera that we're going to use for, for future projects and other things that are going to come later on. Underneath that camera, we've got another little tiny little camera there, but that's an HD camera. That's a Pi cam that's connected through directly through to a Raspberry Pi. Now, as I mentioned before, Raspberry Pi is the controller that I've gone with over Arduino and other control units, uh, Jetson Nano, things like that. I've gone with the Raspberry Pi mainly because I've got a little bit more experience with them and I find it a little bit easier to work with and they're actually a lot cheaper. But, so the camera is feeding through into the Raspberry Pi. Where is the Raspberry Pi, you ask? The Raspberry Pi is actually, sorry Tiffany, is actually on Tiffany, it's on board. Okay, so it's powered, when she powers up, it powers up the computer. Now, what this is actually doing is this. We are running through the camera into the Raspberry Pi. We are running uh, something called OpenCV, which is open computer vision. Open meaning it's free open source software, computer vision software. The idea is that basically using Python sort of coding, which is the language that is used, um, we are accessing an object recognition library, the Cocoa Opera, uh, the, the object recognition library, which basically consists of about 80 items in this predetermined library. Now the way that works is that things like cups and shoes and ironing boards and people, thousands of images have been input into this library. And at any one given instance, an object, a computer should be able to recognize those objects. And it will have a certain probability that it's seeing that object. Now, as I said, the way this works, HD camera into the Raspberry Pi, running that code. We have then got the Raspberry Pi connected in Tiffany to a video transmission system. That video transmission system takes the output from the HDMI on the Raspberry Pi and outputs it to a remote screen, which we have here. No wires, no connections. It's all done through um, wireless and Bluetooth, okay? Now, you can see here, we're running the, the code that we're running, the code that's been written, which is accessing this library. And you can see here, it outputs then a screen. And I can play around with this with different code. And you can see there's loads going on here. Little boxes all over the place and words that say terminate. Now, the reason it says terminate is in the code, I've told it that if it recognizes a human being, which is accessing that library, instead of writing human being, I want it to write terminate because this, of course, is a hunter killer robot. It kills human beings. So it wants to terminate them. Then the little writing, the little numbers next to it is the probability that is actually seeing a human being and not seeing a gorilla, for example, or a carrot. That's the probability. Now, it's fun. Camera into Raspberry Pi, output through a video transmitter into a screen. Our robot now has computer vision. It can now see. Okay, you might think, well, what's the point of that? It's fun. Right, remember a few weeks ago, I was talking about inputs and outputs on Raspberry Pi. So basically, an input is a camera feed into a Raspberry Pi. The output is then comes from the pins on the Raspberry Pi that can trigger something. A motor simply spins when you apply power to it. So if we trigger an instance where the code says, turn on the motor, the motor will spin. So that's how we control things. Turn ahead, move a servo. Got me thinking, got me thinking, what can we do with this? How can we use this machine learning, this object recognition to trigger things. And that's what got me thinking, well, how would you challenge a giant hunter killer robot? Well, you're not gonna challenge it with a cup. Oh look, this is a really scary cup. No, doesn't it have, does it even recognize a cup? It's a chair. Oh, <laughs> it recognized it as a, well, I don't know. <laughs> we didn't recognize it as much then, did it? Because, let me see if we can wake it back up again. Let's try that again. Got to turn my screensaver off. Or at least, 
don't have it time out so quickly. Anyway, let's try again. Oh look, a really scary cup. Oh, it recognised it as a chair. Did it recognise it as a cup? Yes, cup. So that's how good object recognition is. So it got me thinking. Still knows it's me though, doesn't it? Look, I'm, a, I'm 70, 64% sure, 71% sure, and it wants to kill me. So anyway, it got me thinking, right? You're gonna challenge your hunter killer robots. What are you gonna use? You're going to use a weapon. Now, these aren't real. These are just props. These are toy things. These are things that we've just produced for films. So we could teach it what these objects are. So this is a pistol. But this is armor, armor plating in the real robot. So this isn't going to affect this. So you point one of these at this, she's not going to react at all. However, if we were to point an assault rifle at Tiffany, she might react to it. Not sure she's going to react in the way we want her to react. But let's see, let's, let's see what happens. If, if this might work or it might not work, I don't know. So, right, so basically what we're going to do is I'm gonna sort of come around here and we're gonna see what happens if I point this assault rifle at Tiffany. And we're gonna see what her response might be. It's a bit scary, this. Oh no. So of course she's going to respond to it because I've just pointed a gun at her. All right, let's put the gun down. So she knows I'm not a threat anymore now because I'm not pointing a gun at her. What if I pull the trigger? Not sure I want to actually. Um, well, let's take this gun out of safe. Remember, this isn't a real gun. This is just a prop gun. I could point a laser at it just to make it more fun. No, I don't want to do that. I'm really scared. As you can see, it's recognizing me. It still wants to terminate me. And interestingly, its probability has gone up now. I'm holding the gun that it Basically, it's at 75% that it wants to actually kill me. So let's see what happens then if I point the gun and I pull the trigger. She's going to respond. She's going to respond by shooting me. So interestingly, very, very interestingly, let's put that down now because it's a bit scary. She's responding to my to the input. So she's taking the data that's coming from here. She's processing that data through a Raspberry Pi, believe it or not, and making a decision whether or not different things are threats. Little gun. Not a threat. It's not a threat because she's been told that she's got armor piercing bodywork or, you know, she's armor plated. So the little gun can't hurt her. Armor piercing rifle, on the other hand, can hurt her meaning she's going to respond to it and she's going to shoot the target. Imagine if that was real. Lines of code, lines of code. That's all it is. Anyway, the next few weeks, I'm gonna show you how I did that because it was really, really good, but it's only going to go out on Patreon, I'm afraid. So if you wanna see how we're doing this, if you wanna see how we're getting all of this to work and react to the different control systems, you're gonna have to sign up for Patreon. You're gonna go and have a look and see how we're doing this, because it is quite clever. And of course, being open source code, you can apply this to any of your own projects. Um, it really, really is good. And as I said, on YouTube in the next few weeks, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna show you in a little bit more detail how we've written the code for the Raspberry Pi, how the hardware has physically been all connected up, uh, and some of the other systems that I've kind of used and that we're going to be using to add even more object recognition and machine learning. And the machine learning stuff is crazy. It's so cool, but it is so, so scary. Because all of a sudden now we can potentially move a quarter of a ton robot by lines of code. It's just great. Anyway, tune in soon.